Well, good golly, Miss Holly, this, this is a doozy. Congressional sources confirming to Fox that Holly Paz, formerly a top deputy in the IRS division handling applications for tax exempt status, reviewed up to 30 of those applications herself. Not from Cincinnati, where we're told originally that rogue agents were doing all of this, but from Washington, D.C., where Ms. Powell herself was doing this. To Kelly Carrender, one of the Tea Party groups targeted by the IRS, on what she makes of all of this. Well, uh, the mystery gets more mysterious, I guess, Kelly, but it shouldn't be a shocker to anyone that, that uh, you know, examinations of this breadth uh, were just done out of the local office. No, that's a completely ridiculous claim that they made in the first place. And it sounds like Holly is now also trying to say that she thought they were working on it in Cincinnati, and Cincinnati people thought they were waiting for direction from D.C., and so it was really just a miscommunication. But I was speaking to a couple of former federal employees last night, actually, and they said that that is preposterous because that is not the way the federal government works. And we know that that's definitely not how the IRS works. No, when you say it's not how the government works, that an agency or unit or a staff office can on its own unilaterally do stuff, certainly without checking with the mothership, which in this case is Washington. Right. And we know that there's systems that, flat, you know, if something is late, it flags it and supervisors see and it goes up the chain. And there's constant reminders that something is late or overdue, um, especially now with computers and the technology that we have. So there's no way that there was a year and a half long miscommunication or a three year miscommunication where everybody thought somebody else was working on it. Uh, I think they're just trying to figure out a way to weasel out of being accountable for what they've done to us. You know, Kelly, when your group was fingered and all, and they were asking, you know, all sorts of added questions and forms and delays, how was it presented to you? When you raised, and you don't seem like a very uh, sort of, oh, go ahead, quietly, I'll accept everything thrown at me type of a person. Well, when that was going on, how was it explained? Well, for a large number of groups, nothing was explained at all. There just was no contact. And when people had their attorneys contact the IRS, they just never heard back from the IRS. Uh, and as far as Tea Party Patriots, my group is concerned, that was a big part of it too, was just not even getting any response. And then when you did get a response, it was just with, it was something asking you more questions, more invasive questions. All right, so, so on that point, Kelly, I, I didn't want to jump on you there, but that's, that's an important point. When they were asking questions, let's say even more invasive questions, was it at that point that you or a lot of your colleagues and friends, I mean, started to say, wait a minute, this isn't coming from some obscure field office with people who are in a corner cubicle just curious? I mean, this has something of more substance and maybe main office feel to it. There's no way. There were, you know, the Tea Party movement is so connected online. I mean, that's where we were born. That's where we've, we've stayed a lot of times. We were very connected. And so we knew that this was happening to so many groups across the nation. And that's what we were seeing, that these weird, invasive questions were happening. And there was no way that it could have been done on that scale with those type of questions coming from a couple of people in Cincinnati that just thought, hey, we're going to ask the Tea Party movement what books they read and what, you know, in pro life yeah. groups, what prayers they're saying. Well, Kevin, what no do you make of when Ms. Paz and some of these others who had been linked to Washington saying, well, that this was not a target of conservative groups, even though Tea Party was in the name, they thought just as easily it could have been liberal groups. In other words, this was not going after an agenda or point of view. This was going after the groups that were abusing, or that in the eyes of their eyes, potentially abusing tax exempt uh, status that was uh, being handed out like candy. It's ludicrous and it's obvious that they're lying about that because no liberal groups have come forward to say that they had the same treatment that Tea Party and conservative groups did. We know for a fact that they were targeting. They've admitted there was targeting. The IG's report says there was targeting. Everything points to targeting. So the fact that they're trying to say that, we, that, that the rules just weren't clear enough, we know they were darn clear enough for liberal groups. They knew exactly what they were doing for liberal groups and they were clear enough that they knew what they were doing to Tea Party groups. So this is all just them trying to remain unaccountable uh, and that's what seems to be happening across the board. The IRS has gotten too big and too powerful as has the rest of the US government and we the people can't even hold them accountable when they literally oppress and target United States citizens because of their political beliefs. All right, Kelly, thank you very much. Good having you on. Thank you. Well, congratulations, Republicans.